It's like you you crying out for help, but nobody comes to your rescue. Nobody is able to hear your cries. Oyama Mbopa knows just what that feels like. She's a survivor of brutal violence, and when she was attacked, her cries went unanswered. Oyama lives just outside Cape Town, South Africa's golden city and main tourist destination. Visitors from all over the globe flood here. But where Oyama lives, in one of the sprawling townships just a few kilometers from the city center, it's another world. A place with staggering levels of violence, particularly against women. According to Interpol estimates, one in every two women in South Africa will be raped in her lifetime, the highest incidence of rape in the world. But women like Oyama are even more vulnerable than most. Why? Because she's a lesbian. It's not easy being a lesbian in the township. We are always targeted. And men are always trying to show us that at the end of the day, we're women. Oyama was targeted in a vicious attack when she was a schoolgirl, already openly gay and just 15 years old. He dragged me from home, from my way home, to this area. At that time, there were not too many shacks around here. There was a small passage here in between had a knife, told me to take off my pants and my underwear, and then that's when he started raping me. There's no doubt in her mind exactly why she was attacked. Uh, because of my sexuality, so that we can all be cured, so that we can start dating men, and we can all just be straight. It's what they call curative rape. Curative or corrective rape, as it's often called, is an everyday fear for most gay women in South Africa. While the exact number of rapes is not known, gay activist groups estimate that 10 lesbians are raped per week in Cape Town alone. And since 1998, more than 30 of these hate crimes have led to the victim's death. And death was something Oyama's friend, who calls herself Mama Kose, to protect her real identity, wished for after she was violently raped at gunpoint four years ago. I thought stupidly that I should just kill myself. Mama Kose asked us not to show her face. One day, when I was alone in the house, I took petrol, poured it over me, took a match, and set myself on fire. When I saw the flames on me, I started screaming for help, but I was burning by then. Mama Kose believes she too was targeted because of her sexuality. When she turned down a man's propositions on her way to a local store, he became violent. So to no man, I'm not interested with the guys, I'm dating girls. Said, you are a lesbian, yes, I'm a lesbian. He then dragged her to some toilets in a passage behind some houses. He had a gun pointed at her head. They told me that I'm gonna show He said he was going to show me that I have a vagina, not a penis. That he was going to give me the penis I don't want. Yeah, 
Mama Kose survived the attack, but the shame left her scarred both emotionally and physically for life. Some experts say that the shocking levels of violence against women in South Africa are a reflection of the country's troubled past. We had 50 years of very brutal apartheid, um, where everybody was brutalized. The legacies of that remain. Bernadette Muthian, who works with the South African Human Rights Organization in Gender, says that both the country's history of oppression and the poverty that still rules the lives of so many here are partly to blame for the violence. When you strip a person of human dignity, you strip them of their humanity. They can't see other people as human beings. And this in part explains the levels of violence and the types of violence we see. And Muthian believes that lesbians face an even greater threat. While South Africa has some of the most progressive legal policies towards homosexuals in Africa, it's the only country in the continent to sanction gay marriage, Muthian says, paradoxically, the very laws designed to protect gay rights and allow women to be open about their sexuality may actually exacerbate their peril. I think with sort of legal protections would irritate um, some uh, traditional men and that they would feel more um, compelled to, to be violent towards um, lesbian and bisexual women. Discriminatory attitudes are deeply entrenched here, she says, sometimes even within their own families. Although Oyama is now clearly surrounded by the love and support of her large family, it wasn't always so. When she was 13, she revealed to her mother that she was gay. My mom didn't want to hear anything of it. Um, uh, there were meetings called for me, family meetings, elders coming to speak to me to tell me that it was wrong, blah, blah, blah. There was this thing new, new, new to me. It was a shock. I said, this is witchcraft, my child. I used to beat her. I used to beat her. I used to beat her a lot. Being gay in our, in our culture, especially us as black people, it's a taboo because we also don't educate our people about what is homosexuality. It took Oyama's mother eight long years to accept her daughter's sexuality. When she finally, finally, finally let go and just accept me, it changed my whole life to just hear her telling me how much she loves me and she has accepted my sexuality. Yes, I did accept my child as she is, and I love her, I love her. And to help her, her family arranged a ceremony for Oyama and her twin sister. Their grandfather honors their ancestors and calls both for any evil deeds perpetrated against the sisters in the past to be cleansed and for them to be protected in the future. But to protect the rights of all gay people here in the future, the laws concerning homosexual rights must be implemented, says Edwin Cameron, Justice of the South African Constitutional Court. And lesbian women challenge male supremacy and the, the hierarchy of gender very profoundly. Cameron says that even taking that first step to seek justice is hard here for the women. There's a lot of work to be done in making it easier for lesbians to report rape. Only a fraction of South African women, one out of every nine, whether gay or straight, ever report their rape. Many experts like Cameron blame a lack of understanding of the trauma of rape combined with insensitive handling of victims by the police and courts and lax sentencing of perpetrators. We've got to change attitudes on the part of, of the public, police officials, people like myself, judges and lawyers, magistrates. Also essential is the right to treatment for victims. 
Well, I felt that it was necessary for me to design something very specifically for sexual abuse. Toka Majikweni of the South African National Prosecuting Authority has established a chain of innovative, comprehensive treatment facilities for rape survivors called the Tutuzela Care Centers. They're a one-stop shop offering immediate medical, psychological and legal care, all under one roof. We want to turn victims into survivors and finally to victors. Hailed by UN Women, the Women's Branch of the United Nations as one of the best examples globally of services for rape survivors, there are now some 50 centres in operation in the country. But Majakweni believes for women to really become victors, there must be an end to rape cases that drag on for years and prolong the suffering of survivors. I designed the timelines to say that we have to start a case um, upon reporting. Nine months later, that victim must have her verdict. Now she says prosecutors provided by the centers are getting higher conviction rates faster. No body should be violated in that way. Nomkibo Manzini, chief of the South African UN Women Office, which works with the government to combat rape, agrees a fast and sensitive response for victims is essential. The South African government, I think, has done well in terms of the legislation. They need also to ensure that when gays and lesbians experience rape and murder, they can follow up as quickly as, as possible before the evidence uh, disappears. Oyama saw her own attacker caught and sentenced to five years in prison but she still struggles with a society she feels doesn't accept her sexuality. To help her heal and to protect others, she now runs a workshop for young gay women to discuss how to confront the discrimination they all share. Without anyone pointing fingers. That's a very valid point. Tina, us as humans, I'm not going to say gay people only, mm. us as humans, we do not want to be discriminated against. This is who we are. We're not trying to say we are men. We're taking over the men. We're just saying this is who we are. Accept us as the women that we are. But Oyama believes that real acceptance can't happen until male attitudes towards women and especially towards lesbians also change. It's a sentiment shared wholeheartedly by this man. We think it's important that men um, um, join uh, the movement and, and stand up against gender-based violence. Dumisani Ribombo works for an organization called Sonki Gender Justice, which runs a bold program with men and boys in South Africa's townships. The goal is to change the attitude that violence against women is acceptable and to teach them that each man can make a difference. We want men to realize that it is so inhuman not to respect someone. It is worse to even instill violence acts because you disagree with a person's ideals or opinions. And Dumisani is speaking from the heart. At age 15, ill-equipped, he says, to resist peer pressure, he reluctantly took part in a gang rape for which he received an overwhelming reception from his classmates. We were given a standing ovation for that act, um, as if we have done something so great. Um, but I was eaten from that moment on by guilt. Driven by his desire to right his wrong, he now dedicates his life to preventing men and boys from committing the same crime he did. We cannot say we are free when our women, be it straight or lesbian, they will walk in fear in every day of their lives. It's not easy to forget. I forgive because I do not want to imprison myself. And there are times when I feel like I'm being imprisoned in my own body. Um, it's like I wanted to break free. 
from all the negativity. While the memories of her attack can't be erased, Oyama is determined to remain true to who she is until such a time that she and all the other women like her are accepted and they can walk free from fear. Just because I was a victim of rape, I'm not going to dwell on that. I'm going to study. I'm going to be someone. And I want him to see me tomorrow as a successful woman.